right, there we go. I believe we are officially live. Let's get comments pulled up on my end. Where's those comments at? I know they're around here somewhere. There we go. Okay. Yes, we are officially live. What is up, everybody? Wonderbro here with Vacate Fear. Now, <coughs> I just want to say, before we even get started here, that my face is a little swollen. Okay, you probably won't be able to tell, but my uh, face, particularly my mouth area, is a little swollen. I've got a toothache. I've got a toothache. Well, it's not a toothache anymore. It doesn't hurt anymore. It did last night. Uh, today, it's more just swollen than anything else. So, <coughs> really, um, really glad it's no longer hurting. However, it is swollen. So, if I'm talking a little funny today, or if you notice me speaking or pronouncing certain words a little bit funny today... That is why. All right. That is why. What is up, Sanchez? What's up, Wonderlust? Gina, Megan, how you guys doing? I'm in a training day. That's an awesome way to look at it. Just what I needed. Yeah, so today, guys, we're going to be talking about some personal examples of coping methods that I had to cut out. Now, um, you know, we talk a lot about how your brain is watching. We talk a lot about how your your behaviors and what you do or do not do when you are anxious really determines what uh, your brain is going to set your anxiety levels as. It really determines uh, what your brain is going to assume, right? based on watching you. So your brain sees what you sees and, and hears what you hear. That's a, another little cr uh, quote from Nothing Works Not Weebly. I told you guys I might not be able to pronounce certain words today due to the swollen face. However, the point is, okay, <clears throat> your brain is watching. Your brain is watching. We talk a lot about positive accepting behaviors and coping methods is a big one. Coping methods is a big one. In fact, um, I believe on nothingworks.weebly, I reference this blog often. I'm a huge fan. It says something along the lines of anxiety minus rituals equals cure. Anxiety minus rituals equals cure. And the reason it says that, okay, the reason it says that is because your brain is watching. Your brain is watching. So you can kind of look at it this way. Anxiety is your brain's way of asking you, is there a problem? Because here's some anxiety. Okay, so your brain is saying, is there a problem? And then depending on what you do or how you respond to this anxiety, your brain will then determine, yes, there is a problem or no, there's not a problem. I can go away, right? So um, that's why on that site, you know, it says anxiety minus rituals equals cure. It comes back to the positive behaviors. It comes back to the whole your brain is watching. Your brain wants to be shown what it needs to set your anxiety levels at, right? Fighting with your thoughts is completely pointless. You need to retrain your brain. So a big part of that, <clears throat> a big, big part of that comes down to cutting out coping methods. Because what is a coping method? What is a safety-seeking behavior? What is a ritual? All of these things are ways for your brain to determine whether or not you're in true serious danger. So if you've got a lot of coping methods that you've been using for a very long time and every time you're anxious you use these coping methods, what do you think your brain is going to assume? If your brain is asking you with anxiety, is there a problem, and you respond with a coping method, what do you think it's going to assume, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to give you some uh, personal examples from my journey on the coping methods that I had to cut out in order to start to heal. Um, it does say at the end there in the title that you're going to have to figure out your own, right? Because this is very personal. This is very personal. The coping methods and rituals that I had, you may not have. You may have some of them. You may not have any of them, right? So uh, this is very personal, and you have to ask yourself, what are my coping methods? What does it do? Uh, what do I do that tells my brain that there is a problem where there's not, right? Figure it out. <clears throat> Glad your toothache gone. Yeah, the actual toothache is gone. It's just really, really sore and really swollen. But the actual pain is gone, unless, of course, I touch it or something like that. Dizzy spells, absolutely. Anxiety can absolutely cause uh, vertigo, diz uh, dizzy spells, stuff like that. Of course, I'm assuming if you hear on my streams that you have been cleared by a doctor, right? I always have to assume that. Uh, toothaches are the worst. Yeah, they are not fun. Whiskey on the tooth, it helps. If not, at least it will get you drunk. <laughs> I love that. That's comment of the day right there. What's up, face paint? <clears throat> so, 
Someone in the Discord told me I won't become unsensitized until I address the agoraphobia. That's not exactly true, uh, because regardless, your brain is watching what you do, right? It's watching whether or not you're using your coping methods. Now, that does not particularly mean that you have to face every single fear that you have in order to become unsensitized. You can absolutely heal without facing every single fear that you have. Um, yeah, that is just not true. Now, should you eventually face this and address this? Of course, obviously, that goes without saying, but can you desensitize and can you start to heal without addressing every single fear that you have? Yes, you can. If you start, you know, cutting out your coping methods slowly but surely, you will start to see a difference uh, regardless of whether or not you face every single fear you have right off the bat, right? In fact, most people kind of go at it that way, from what I've seen. Most people, uh, they address the severe sensitization first, and then they start to work on more of the little things, right? Um, now, here's another important little fact to keep in mind. Chances are, when you start to heal your nerves, you may realize that you don't have as many fears as you thought you had. And it was all a very big overcomplication from the body, right, and the mind, the tired mind. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So should you face your fears? Absolutely. Uh, do you have to face every single fear that you have in your book before you can start to heal your nerves? No. No. <clears throat> all right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's switch on over. Hello, you probably can't see my swollen face. It's probably not obvious, or maybe it is. Can you guys tell, like in this general area, we're a little swollen today? Yeah, it's not like the funnest thing in the world, but I'm very, very uh, grateful that the pain has left. I just have to wait for the swelling to go down. So, if you were here just a few minutes ago, then you already know what we're going to talk about today, which is a list of my personal coping methods that I had to cut out. Now, again, I want to make this known, um, just because... These are my coping methods that I had to get rid of in order to retrain and rewire my brain and show my brain that there was no real danger, right? Just because I had to do that with these particular coping methods doesn't mean that these are things you have to cut out, right? These might not be your coping methods. Um, one way that you can tell whether or not this is a coping method for you or, or if any of these coping methods you can relate to is ask yourself the question, uh, do I do this thing because I'm trying to get away from anxiety? Do I do this thing because I'm trying to soothe my anxiety? Do I do this thing to try to um, uh, fight my anxiety, right? To try to get away from, to try to suppress, right? So, <clears throat> again, this is a very personal journey. As far as coping methods go, you have to figure out what it, uh, what it is that you do when you are anxious, what you know? What are your tics? What are your temptations? What are your habits that you are giving into that are showing your brain that there is a problem? Because again, anxiety is like the brain's way of saying, "Hey, is there a problem?" And then if you use your coping methods or do whatever it is you do that you normally react to this anxiety, the brain says, "Oh, I guess there is a problem." So, again, very personal journey, but we're going to jump into them. You have to figure out your own on your own. But these are just some of mine. So. I've got them wrote down here on a notepad. The very first thing that I've got wrote down here is Google. I'm pretty sure everyone in this chat, in this live stream right now, can relate to this. Google. Google was one of the very first things that I had to quit. Um, and believe me, coping methods are a lot like an addiction. So uh, it's not the funnest thing in the world. Now, Google is the very first thing that I had to get over, that I had to quit. The very first thing that was keeping me sensitized. The very first thing that was telling my brain that there was a problem. Because every time I was anxious, I would drop what I was doing and I would get on Google. Right. So what do you think the brain's going to assume if it continues to see this behavior? It's going to assume problem, 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 danger, danger, danger. So... Uh, I used to be the kind of person that would have 12, 13, 14, 15 Google tabs open at once. I'm not even exaggerating. So the very first thing I had to do was get off Google, right? The very first thing I had to do was get off Google. Uh, that was my biggest one. And like I said, I'm pretty sure everybody here in the chat can relate to this. So if you've got a ton of Google tab uh, tabs open, you would probably be doing yourself a huge favor if you slowly begin to close those in your own time, right? So moving on to my next coping method, checking my notes. Now, this was another huge one for me, maybe even bigger than Google, honestly. So <clears throat> when I was at my worst and when I would go through my bouts of sensitization, one thing that I would really do to try to make the anxiety go away was I would take notes in my phone. Uh, specifically, I would take notes in my phone of little things that would that I thought would make me feel better. And if I ever needed them, I could pull them up quickly and I could read them and that would take the anxiety away. Right. Uh, if I ever need them, 
I could pull them up very, very quickly, read them, and then hopefully the anxiety would go away. It'd be like little things that I needed to do, right? It would be like little things that I could lean on, uh, like little facts about the brain. Well, this is what you need to do, and this is what you need to do. Understand this. You already know what you need to do. And if you're like me and you're taking a ton of notes that you can't even read all of them because there's so many, you can't even read all of them because there's so many, you never go back and read them. Thank you so much for that $10 tip round. You never go back and read any of them because there's just so many of them, then it's starting to turn into less of a research thing and more of a coping method, right? There's nothing wrong with taking a note here or there. There's nothing wrong with screenshotting uh, what you need to do. There, there, there's nothing wrong with having a photo or two of, of how to retrain your brain. But when it got to the point that I let it get to where it was notepad after notepad after notepad after notepad, so many notes that I couldn't even keep up with them, so many notes that I wouldn't even go back and read because there was just too many of them, then it's starting to become a compulsion. Then it is starting to become a coping method. Then it's starting to become something that you do that is showing your brain that there's a problem, right? So again, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with research. There's nothing wrong with taking a few notes. There's nothing wrong with maybe even taking a few screenshots of something maybe, for example, you see on the Facebook page that helps you out, right? There's nothing wrong with this. But when it got to the point where every time I was anxious, I would open my notepad and try to dig through my notes to find that magical phrase that was going to set me free, then it's becoming a compulsion. Then it's becoming a ritual, right? So, TM, thank you so much for the $10 tip. So then it's becoming a compulsion. Then it's becoming a ritual. So, again, let me be very, very clear about that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with taking a few notes. There's absolutely nothing wrong with screenshotting a few helpful things here and there. But when it comes to the point that you're making note after note after note after note after note, and every time that you're anxious, you pull up your notepad and take more notes and more notes and more notes, and you start digging through your notes trying to find a magical phrase, then it's becoming a compulsion. Then it's becoming a ritual. Your brain does not like to see this, right? So checking notes, that is number two on my list. Sorry, along with this swollen face, my sinuses are, it's a rough day. All right, Chad. So we're going to go on to number three here, uh, going to my comfort corner. Now that's what I wrote down. I've never really called it a comfort corner until today, but there was one particular spot in the room where I would have, you know, my, my little bed set up and, and some cushions. And I would always run there whenever I was anxious. I would always go there and I would always sit there and basically just sit Indian style and stare at the wall or stare at my phone until I started to feel better. And then I would get back into life a little bit, right? So if every time you're anxious, you run to your comfort corner, which could be that certain armchair in your house, it could be that certain couch that you always go to, whatever it is, right? If every time you're anxious, you run to your comfort corner, what do you think your brain is going to assume, right? So we really have to go back to the caveman days. We really have to go back to the caveman days, and I've made this point a lot before in the past. If every time we're anxious, and the brain is still back in the caveman days, as far as anxiety and panic is concerned, and we start to use rituals, we start to run away to our comfort corner, we start to pull out our phone and check our notes, we start to go on Google, right? If the brain is back in the caveman days and it sees you performing these actions, it's going to assume that you're running from a threat, it's going to assume that you're hiding from a threat. It's also going to assume if it sees you doing the same thing every time you're anxious that you try to do in order to calm your anxiety, it's also going to assume that you are indeed fighting off or running from some sort of real threat. So again, uh, retreating to my little comfort corner in the house, right? That was a big one for me that I finally had to start to cut out. Um, and what I did in order to kind of combat that coping method is, and, and again, before I go any further, I do want to say this. <sighs> These are things you shouldn't do while you're anxious. Should you do them, period? There's nothing wrong with going and laying in your bed. There's nothing wrong with going to your little comfort corner when you're trying to relax. There's nothing wrong uh, with this or that uh, particularly. I mean, I would personally avoid Google regardless or writing too many notes regardless but there are some things on this list that you know for example going to my comfort corner which is things you can do when you're relaxed it's it's things you know these things apply to when you're anxious these things are things that you do in order to try to get rid of the anxiety right so i want to make that known i don't want anyone out there thinking well i guess i could never go back to my bed might as well chuck that in the garbage. Yeah, you know, that's no good anymore. No, and that's not what we're saying. We're simply meaning if you do these things while you're anxious to try to avoid your anxiety, then it's a ritual. Then it's a coping method. Then it's a negative behavior, right? So by doing these things or by not doing these things, rather, um, whatever your personal coping methods are, you are demonstrating to the brain that there's no longer a problem, right? JP, thank you for the $20 tip. Hey, I appreciate you guys. So 
by not doing these things, you are demonstrating to, uh, to the brain that there is no longer a problem. And again, like the title says, you have to figure out what your own coping methods are. And they're pretty easy to spot. It's whatever you do to try to make the anxiety go away. So, <sighs> moving on to the next one. This, this sinus thing, uh, not fun. Trying to solve my thoughts. Now, this is a big one. Obviously, it's right there in our, one of our two main keys, leave your thoughts alone. So, trying to solve my thoughts was a big one. It was a big one, and of course it feels natural. It feels like human, um, you know, tendency to want to figure out your thoughts. I get it. It feels very, very natural. So here's the problem with that, though. A fight is a fight, and a fight to the brain means there's a problem. And when there's a problem, what does the brain do? Being the stubborn, stupid brain it is, the stubborn, stupid, gay man brain that it is, if it thinks there's a problem because you're fighting your thoughts or feelings, it gives you anxiety to protect you from this problem, and it has no clue that it itself is the problem. And this is the very ironic cycle. So a fight is a fight, and that's why trying to solve your thoughts is pointless. It's just going to get you more anxiety. Chances are you already rationally know these things. Chances are you've already been there, done that. It's just a cycle. It's just a never-ending loop at this point. You might as well give up on trying to do that, right? Um, <clears throat> before we move on to the last couple things that I've got written down here, let's see what some of the comments say. What if I go to bed uh, to go on my phone and play video games? Is that still considered coping? It's up to you. It, it, it's Like I said, it's a very personal journey. I don't know what you do in order to try to make your anxiety go away. Do you reach for the video games every time you're feeling anxious to try to um, say to yourself, go away, anxiety, or do you reach for them just because you genuinely want to play a video game? Uh, do you pick up your phone and do you call that friend not because you're so interested in what they have to say, but rather because you want to make your anxiety go away? So you get what I'm getting at. It's a very personal journey, and I've said this a lot in the past. It's really up to you. You've got to figure out what you're doing as far as coping methods are concerned, these negative behaviors. Uh, you got to figure out what your negative behaviors are. You got to figure out what your negative behaviors are, because, for example, there could be somebody in here who's never even wrote a single note on anxiety, but instead, when they're anxious, they like to—I um, I, I don't know—I I don't know. The list goes on and on. You know, there's so many possibilities. So that's why I say it's—it's it's a personal journey. You have to figure out what your coping methods are, right? You have to figure out what your coping methods are. You have to figure out what your negative behaviors are, and they're not hard to spot. It's anything that you try to do when you're anxious. So again, if you like to play video games, play video games. But if you play video games when you're anxious in order to try to, you, you know, you know, I've actually got a controller right here. You sit there and you go, oh, please make it go away. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it stop. And then you try to play your video games. Okay, I'm trying to ignore you. I don't want to feel you. You see what we're getting at. <clears throat> you see what we're getting at. So. So that's the thing. That's why I say it's it's very much, it, it's personal. Somebody says play badminton in the evening is a coping. I don't know. I cannot answer that. I cannot answer that. You guys could ask me, you know, uh, um, all, for all sorts of examples. I don't know. And the reason I don't know, let me tell you, the reason I don't know is because a coping method is something you do every time you're anxious to try to make the anxiety go away, right? So whether it's reaching for your phone or, or you know, I don't know. It, it's it's really up to you to figure out. So what is a coping method? It's something that you try to do in order to make the anxiety go away. Somebody says, well, I like to play badminton. Well, if you're playing badminton, that's fine. That's great. That's a positive behavior, right? Right? But I'm I'm 90% sure that you don't go out in your yard and play badminton every time you're anxious. So that's probably not a coping method. Do you get what we're getting at? So it gets a bit tricky, right? But honestly, it's not that hard to spot. It's something that you repetitively do. Thank you so much, Lewis, for the $6 tip. It's something that you repetitively do to try to make your anxiety go away, right? So when someone in chat says, I play badminton in the evening, is this a coping method? Chances are you don't go out in your yard and play badminton every time that you're anxious, okay? Because if you did, that would be considered a ritual. So you get what I'm getting at. You get what I'm getting at. These these coping methods are usually repetitive. They're usually something you do every single time that you're anxious, right? So, uh, you know, it's personal. You have to figure out for yourself what your coping methods are that you do when you become anxious in order to try to avoid your anxiety, right? And again, chances are you don't go out in your yard and play badminton every time you're anxious, right? So you get what I'm getting at. It's personal. You have to figure it out for yourself. It's not hard to figure it out. Ask yourself, is there something that I repetitively do in order to try to make my anxiety go away every time my anxiety comes around, right? There you go. So, and again, 
I want to make it clear, you know, I've got, for example, going to my comfort corner on my list. Uh, that doesn't mean chuck your whole bed in the garbage because you can no longer use your bed. It just means if you're anxious in the moment, should you probably run to bed? Probably not. Probably not, unless you're genuinely sleepy and tired, right? So you get what I'm, you get what I'm getting at. <clears throat> so my next one was uh, reassured sinking. Now, this is a big one, and you can all probably relate to it. I don't even have much to say about this one. Reassured sinking, right? It's so, it, it's so common. It's so straightforward. All of you can relate, right? Reassurance seeking. So if every time you're anxious, you pick up your phone and you message your friend and you say, I'm very anxious. Please tell me that I'm not going to go crazy. This would be considered a ritual. This would be considered something that your brain is probably not going to like to see right? Because it's something that you're doing that is telling the brain, here's a problem. Okay, so that's a big one. I don't have much to say about that one. That one's pretty straightforward and obvious. Um, let's see, do I got anything else? I think that's about it. So those were just a few examples, guys, uh, personal examples of things that I started to cut out in order to retrain my brain, in order to rewire my brain, right? Um, now, again, my main points that I wanted to go over here, and it's time for me to smoke a cigarette so uh, I heard that YouTube is gonna start getting a bit bossy on smoking on on videos so <clears throat> that was one reason we made all these different streams but also for organization's sakes makes it easier for people in the future to watch but again some main points that I want to go over guys uh, this is personal okay that's one of my big ones this is personal not everything on my coping methods list okay is going to be on yours um, Another thing that I want to say, just because going to your bed is one of your coping methods that you're going to try to cut out, doesn't mean you can never go back to your bed, <laughs> right? <coughs> doesn't mean that you can never go back to your bed. Um, it simply means that every time you're anxious, should you probably run to your bed? No, probably not. But it doesn't mean you have to throw your whole bed into the garbage. Uh, smoking a coping method, it was for me because I started to smoke even more than I normally did. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? So that's that's another thing that wasn't on my list, but it is something that I did try to cut back on a little bit, right? I didn't quit. Obviously, I didn't quit, uh, but I did try to cut back on it. <clears throat> thank you, by the way, guys. Uh, thank you, by the way. Sorry, my head is not all here today. Uh I, I was up pretty late last night. I finally got some sleep, but my head is just still not all here today. Thank you guys for helping me break the tip goal. Thank you so much. Can we get a shout out in chat for Lewis, uh, JP, TM, Round? Thank you guys so much. I truly, truly appreciate it. JP coming through with the 20. Thank you guys so much. I truly, truly do appreciate it. Uh, I drive my husband up the wall wanting cuddles and reassurance all the time. Yeah, like I said, you know, and, and one of my main points today is that this is a very personal journey. Just because I had certain coping methods that I did every time I was anxious doesn't mean you're going to be able to relate to these, just like I can't relate to all of yours. For example, every time you're anxious, you might like to go sit in the uh, bathroom in the corner. I don't know. Like, you know, you get what I'm saying? So that's why I put at the end there, you have to figure it out yourself. What is something that you repetitively and constantly do every time that you're anxious in order to try to avoid uh, the fight or flight response? This is when it becomes a compulsion. This is when it becomes a ritual. This is when it becomes uh, something that you do in order to try to avoid anxiety. Right? <clears throat> What's up, Will? <clears throat> now, it, it's very tempting. I'm also going to throw this in there. We haven't discussed this today. It's very tempting to want to give in to your coping methods because they bring you temporary short-term relief. So if I was very anxious, for example, it would be very tempting for me to run over to my comfort corner and to grab my phone and get on Google or to start checking my notes that I've written down to try to soothe myself, right? Which is something I did heavily. It would be very tempting to do that. Very, very tempting. It'd be like an itch, man. It would be such a strong habit that you might start doing it before you even realize you're doing it and you have to stop yourself. So I get it. These coping methods are not necessarily easy to break, right? They're not necessarily easy to break. But what you need to start living by is my brain is watching. If I'm feeling extremely anxious right now, should I give in to my negative behaviors? No, absolutely not. If my brain is watching, I shouldn't give in to my negative behaviors because I don't want my brain to assume there's a real problem. Because as soon as my brain starts to assume there's a real problem, it's on like Donkey Kong, boy, right? 
it's going to start giving me more anxiety in the future, which is what we're trying to break out of, the cycle that we're trying to break out of. So we got to set a good example here. Uh, but with that being said, I know it's not the easiest thing in the world, and I know it's extremely tempting to use your coping methods, right? And as far as what your coping methods are, that's something you got to figure out for yourself. But you will. It, it's quite easy. You just have to ask yourself the question, what is something I repetitively do? It can be something big or it can be something small every time that I'm anxious to try to fight my fight or flight response right there you go and that's why I said it's a very personal journey because I don't know what you do right you have to ask yourself that question <clears throat> I think I already read this but I'm more along the lines of playing the video games while accepting feelings and thoughts and that's absolutely fine you know that that's absolutely fine it's not that you're trying to force anything away right and again, that's why I say it's personal. You have to figure it out on your own. I just figured I'd give you guys some examples from my journey. Okay, maybe you can relate to them, maybe you can't. But now you kind of see what we're getting at with positive versus negative behaviors. So when we say, leave your thoughts alone, just live your life positive behaviors, obviously that means cutting out the coping methods, right? That kind of goes without saying. Uh, we've never really mentioned that before, but when I tell you to act how you want to feel, obviously that would mean cutting out your coping methods. Uh, but I did want to do this stream to make it just obvious. Uh, to make it even more obvious, right? <clears throat> What's up, Mommy of Seven? You've got this. you got this. I know you might feel a bit lonely on this journey, but you're definitely not lonely, especially now that you're here, so... <clears throat> All right, guys, so so here's something I want to do because it's always fun to, to kind of get you guys involved in these questions. Um, I want everybody in chat to, you don't have to share if you're embarrassed or if you don't want to, but there is no need to be embarrassed. Uh, I want everyone in chat that wants to participate to tell me, okay, in one message, uh, what are some coping methods that they're already aware that they have? And then what they're going to do to try to work on uh, giving up those coping methods. What they're going to try to do to work on retraining that brain, right? And you can go in your, you can go at your own pace. You can go in your own time. I'm not telling anybody they have to jump uh, headfirst into this. Um, in fact, at the end of the day, it's completely up to you. You might never want to get rid of your coping methods. That would be unfortunate. Uh, but if that's the case, then that's the case. Nobody's forcing you to do this. Nobody's holding a gun to your head, right? So I want everyone in chat. Uh, if you'd like to participate, to tell me what are some coping methods that you're going to try to work on. Like I said, you can go at your own pace. Nobody's telling you that you have to dive headfirst into this, right? <clears throat> so let's see what we got here. Wonder Bro, what's up, Bendy Trees? It's been forever. How have you been? It really has been forever. <laughs> Somebody says, I think I watch YouTube to get my mind off anxiety. Now, there's nothing wrong with watching a movie or watching YouTube, right? Uh, the thing is, what are you watching? Are you watching stuff about anxiety to try to soothe your anxiety? Or are you legitimately just watching something that's not anxiety-related, right? Because I don't want you to mistake, I don't want you guys to mistake everything you do as a coping method. Sometimes we just genuinely ha have things we enjoy doing, like playing video games or watching YouTube. Uh, but if every time you're anxious, see, this is the difference maker between a ritual and between just something you enjoy doing. If you do the thing every time you're anxious and only when you're anxious, then it's probably a ritual. It's probably you trying to run from your anxiety. But if it's something you just genuinely enjoy doing, watching YouTube or playing video games, probably not a ritual. But if it's something you only do when you're anxious to try to get rid of your anxiety, then it's probably a ritual. It's probably a negative behavior, right? <clears throat> so I don't want you guys to think, oh, i got to quit everything I enjoy. I can't do anything I enjoy anymore because of this fucking guy. Um, I want you guys to understand that... If it's something that you only do when you're anxious, then it's probably a ritual. I would only check Google when I was anxious, you know, most of the time. I would only uh, check my notes when I was anxious most of the time, right? But if it's something you enge uh, genuinely enjoy doing, we're not telling you you have to leave that out and just never do that thing again. It's just if it's something you only do when you're anxious, then there's a good chance it's probably a coping method. 
now I play video games a lot. So if I'm playing video games while I'm anxious, but I also play video games while I'm not anxious, chances are that's not a coping method. It's just something I genuinely enjoy doing. You guys see what I'm saying with that? So I don't want anyone to go and throw their bed away because, oh, I go to bed when I'm anxious. No, I'm simply saying, you know the difference. You see what I'm trying to get at here. Everybody see what I'm trying to get out here? I don't want you to think you can't do things that you genuinely enjoy because they're now a coping method. It's just if you do something only when you're anxious to try to get rid of anxiety, that's probably a coping method. <clears throat> that's probably a coping method. And you don't you don't have to overcomplicate this. I don't want anyone to overcomplicate this. I don't want anyone to overcomplicate this. Watching you all the time, what about watching your videos when anxious? Uh, if you're watching the same old videos, right, over and over and over again when you're anxious, but you already know the content of these videos, then you're probably just trying to soothe your anxiety. <clears throat> Chances are you're probably just trying to soothe your anxiety. <clears throat> so you see what we're getting at. Again, it comes down to are you doing these things to try to get rid of your anxiety or not? If the answer to that question is yes, probably a coping method. Moving my hands a lot, squeezing my wrists, scratching, try multitasking, watching videos, play yet. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Running to my phone slash social media this week, I deleted all social media and picked up knitting. That's awesome. So I hope everyone in chat sees what we're getting at. If you have a, a, a an activity that you genuinely enjoy doing, I'm not telling you that you have to stop doing that. I'm simply asking you, what is it that you do when anxiety is turned on that is you trying to get rid of the anxiety? Right? Right? What is it that you do when the anxiety is turned on that's you trying to get rid of anxiety? And then stop doing that thing. Now that doesn't mean, oh, I'm anxious, I can't play my video games. Oh, I'm anxious, I can't watch YouTube. It simply means, are there, are there big coping methods that you're using every time repetitively that you're anxious to try and stop your anxiety? That's what you got to ask yourself. That's what you've got to ask yourself. Doesn't mean you have to throw your bed away. Doesn't mean you have to throw your PlayStation out. Doesn't mean you have to throw your phone in the garbage. It simply means stop doing the things that you normally do when you're anxious and just do something different, right? So if when I'm anxious, I normally go to my comfort corner and start Googling, I'm going to start playing video games instead when I'm anxious. Or if every time that I'm anxious, I desperately seek reassurance, like Bendy Trees just said, I'm probably not going to do that anymore. Or if every time I'm anxious, I go and uh, start checking my phone to see if I can find that magical phrase on the internet, I'm probably not going to do that anymore, right? <clears throat> and we're not, we're not telling you that you have to jump headfirst into this and cut out everything every single coping method known to man. We're not telling you that you have to jump headfirst into this and on day one eliminate all coping methods. You can go at your own pace. You can feel free to go at your own pace. You can feel free to not drop any of your coping methods if that's what you choose. Nobody's forcing you uh, to do anything. But what we are saying is, if there's something that you notice that you repetitively do, whether it's reassurance or going on Google or whatever it is, okay, then you should probably cut that out. <clears throat> you should probably cut that out. So you can you can see what I'm getting at when I say it's very personal. I can't tell you what to cut out. I don't know you uh, that way. You know, I don't know your coping methods in that way. So I can't tell you what you should or should cut out. Like when somebody says, well, should I keep playing video games or should I not? I don't know. Do you only play video games every time you're anxious? And when you're not anxious, you don't even play video games? Then that's probably a coping method. Okay? But if you just genuinely enjoy video games, probably not a coping method. But you get what I'm getting at. Um, it, it's, it's, it's very personal. 
uh, but you can usually figure it out by asking yourself the question, is there something I repetitively do every time I'm anxious to try to fight my anxiety? If so, I should probably not do that thing when I'm anxious, right? So it gets a bit tricky when we start talking about coping methods because it is so personal and it is so uh, personal to each individual out there. But normally that's the question you can ask yourself to figure that out. If I, uh, if I only do said thing when I'm anxious, chances are that's a coping method. If I only do said thing when I'm anxious, chances are that's a coping method. I'm going to say it one more time. Write that down. If I only do said thing when I'm anxious, chances are that's a coping method. Bada bing, bada boom. That's the most simple way we can put that. <clears throat> it comes down to this, guys. Your brain's watching. Your brain is watching, and you're the lead role. You, you, you're the example. You're the lead example here. So... If there's, if there's things that you only do when you're anxious to try to fight your anxiety, chances are your brain is seeing that as a problem. Chances are your brain is seeing that as a problem. And that's why on nothingworks.weebly it says anxiety minus rituals equals cure. Basically, don't change what you're doing just because you're anxious. There you go. That's golden. Everybody write that down. Lewis wins today. Lewis has won the stream. Everybody write that down. I'm serious. Write that down or screenshot that um, and live by that. If you live by that, you're good to go. Basically, don't change what you're doing just because you're anxious. There you go. I couldn't have said it any better myself. Lewis wins the stream for today. Everybody write that down. Um, he just pretty much summed up the whole 30-minute stream in one sentence. He should probably take over my channel. Don't worry, Lewis. I will send you my email and password after the stream is over because that that pretty much sums it up right there. Basically, don't change what you're doing just because you're anxious. There you go. There you go. <clears throat> don't do something that you normally wouldn't do just because you're anxious. If you're doing something just because you're anxious, chances are you don't have genuine interest in that. You're just trying to get rid of your anxiety. Well put, well put, if everyone wants to take note of that. Basically, don't change what you're doing just because you're anxious. <clears throat> my lips my lips look like I did that, uh, that really stupid TikTok challenge. It's ridiculous. Um, now, another important side note to make. Did I say it was easy? No. No, no, no. I never said it was easy. Uh, it's going to be very tempting. These are very strong habits. A coping method is a very strong habit, and you might feel very vulnerable when you give up these coping methods. But we're not asking you to jump head first. We're telling you that you can take it at your own pace. We're telling you that it's up to you. You don't even have to do this if you don't want to. But I am telling you how you can rewire and retrain your brain. And this is what acceptance means. No more, oh my gods, or oh my goodnesses, or, or reaching for this or that. Right? This is what acceptance means. This is what no second fear means, right? It all comes down to living life and cutting out the coping methods. It all comes down to showing your brain how you want to feel. The brain, you know, anxiety is the brain's ways of saying, is there a problem? And depending on how you react, is the brain is going to assume whether or not there is a problem. <clears throat> right? Slow down. Yes, I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, you know, and a lot of people call it magic. I'm telling you, it's not magic. A lot of people call it magic. A lot of people that cut out their coping methods and just accept their thoughts and feelings and don't reach for their coping methods, at first it's not fun, it's not easy, but then when they notice that their worries start to vanish and they start to become this different person that they didn't even know they could be, uh, they call it magic because they don't know how else to explain it. It's not magic. You've just rewired your brain and the misfiring has stopped. The misfiring has stopped. So, I know it feels like magic. <laughs> it definitely feels like magic becoming this new person that you didn't think you could be.
All right, guys, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drop that Discord link for anybody that wants to join us over on the Discord. <coughs> and then what we're going to do, you guys know that I like to do this. I'm going to read some things. Uh, today we're going to read something from the blog post, nothingworks.weebly. Uh, if I can find it. If I can find it, that is. <coughs> Alright, so here we go. Here we go. It's time to show it the truth, alright? That there is nothing medically wrong with you. When you get an energy surge, your limbic system, right, will watch your reactions. If it sees you running, hiding, asking for help, reading desperately about your condition, then it will see something is wrong and keep your energy level high, okay? Of course, there is nothing wrong with asking for help or balanced research, but you will find that you will need assistance less and less as time advances. Just wean yourself off in your own time. If you pretend that all is well, for example, slowly doing the dishes, cooking a meal, watching a movie, calmly walking, uh, then it will automatically set the energy level lower. So, and let's go on to this next one. A compulsion could be escaping outside for a cigarette. It could be reaching for the wine. It could be searching the internet for that magic phrase. It could be holding tightly onto the arm rest of the chair. It could be running upstairs to bed. It could be jumping out of bed and running around the house. It could be, well, whatever you do to try to remove anxiety without actually facing your fight or flight response. To aid your memory and to simplify this little solution, then we must remember the board arc. See below. The chronic overuse of the fight or flight response cannot exist without a spoon feeding it. Hour by hour, day after day, the removal of these rituals has the effect of starving the flight or fight response until it slowly reduces. If we eliminate the rituals from the anxiety condition, then we achieve the removal of the disorder. So, and then it says... Uh, a minus R equals C, which is what you need to remember. A minus R equals C. Anxiety minus rituals equals cure. And the reason this works, guys, and this is from something else, okay, we are literally retraining the brain to no longer view the triggering situations as dangerous, okay? So <clears throat> we face triggers repeatedly so that the brain will learn through repetition that the trigger is distressing but not truly dangerous, all right? So cutting out the coping methods, right? Facing the triggers repeatedly so that the brain will learn and you demonstrate to the brain by no longer using the safety seeking behaviors that there's not a real problem. So there you go. So there you go. I'm going to I'm going to drop that in the chat for you guys to kind of um <clears throat> remember that. It's a very, very simple, and again, this comes from nothingworks.weebly. Uh, I always try to give them credit whenever, or him credit rather, whenever I'm reading from his stuff. Let's drop this in the chat. Sorry, I can be a slow typer when I'm trying to copy something. So that's exactly how it's written right there. And some people, some people might, might read that and say, okay, A minus R equals C, anxiety minus rituals equals cure. Why? <laughs> I'm an overthinker myself sometimes, so I get it. Some people might read that and go, why? Why does that work? It's because you're demonstrating to the brain by cutting out the safety-seeking behaviors, a.k.a. rituals, that there is no real problem. Right? Because if you're always using your rituals, what do you think your brain's going to assume? If your brain sees what you see and hears what you hear and is always watching how you react to the anxiety, if it's watching how you react to the anxiety and you're using all these rituals, it's going to assume there's a problem. Right? Because this is what you've done for so long. <clears throat> because this is what you've done for so long. So that's why that works. Yeah, exactly, Lewis, and there's not much to understand behind the two main keys. Uh, there's not much to understand. I know it seems like a lot because we make so many streams, but the only reason we make so many streams is to try to put it different ways. What it really comes down to at the end of the day is stop fighting your thoughts and feelings, uh, live your life, which means essentially to cut out your coping methods, right? So I know we put it a million different ways, and there's a ton of terms out there, acceptance, no second fear, you know, whatever you want to call it, floating the two main keys, act how you want to feel. There's a million different ways you can put it, but it comes down to stop fighting your thoughts and feelings, just live your life to show your brain that there's no real danger, which means you do have to get rid of the coping methods, right? 
uh, getting a spam call from a 1-800 number. You gotta love those. <clears throat> so I know, I know it feels like there's a lot that you gotta learn or whatever. I, I get that it feels that way because we do make a lot of videos and we do make a lot of streams, but that's just because we want to put it in many different ways so that it can speak to everybody, right? <clears throat> so another one that we've got here is uh, the onslaught of a sudden distressing thought triggers the amygdala. If we understand how the amygdala works, we'd know what we should do, more particularly what we should not do. We'd know that it's a false alarm by the subconscious emotional brain and that the only way to train this part of the brain is by, behaving, uh, by behaviorally demonstrating that there is no threat. Okay. So what does that say there? The only way to train this part of the brain is by behavioral, beh behaviorally demonstrating that there is no threat, which would mean, okay, what we just put in the chat there, A minus R equals C, anxiety minus rituals equals cure. <clears throat> Perfectly normal to experience a bit of tug of war, uh, Ryder. You got to understand, um, Lewis, as far as behaviors go, the brain notices any changes in behavior, right? So if you get anxious, the brain is then paying attention. And if you change your behavior due to the anxiety, and for example, you go on Google because you're anxious, the brain's like, hmm, why did he or she do that? There must be a problem. So the brain notices change in behavior, and that's why rituals keep you stuck. So another example, if I get anxious all of a sudden while I'm playing a video game, and I put the video game down, and instead I pick up my notepad and start making notes about why I'm not going to go crazy, my brain's going to go, hmm, why did he do that? Is it because there's a problem? There must be a problem. <laughs> and that's how that works. And that's why a... Um, you know, cutting out rituals, A minus R equals C, anxiety minus rituals equals cure. That's why that's a thing. That's why that works. Because the brain notices the change in behavior. If, if anxiety is the brain's way of saying, hey, is there a problem? Here's some anxiety. Now tell me if there's a problem or not. And then it notices that you change your behavior based on that anxiety. It's going to go, hmm, why did they do that? <laughs> It's because there's a problem. Here's some more anxiety to help you with that problem. And that's that's the very ironic cycle right there in a nutshell. <clears throat> everyone see how everyone in chat see how that works? If the brain notices your change in behavior, if you have to behaviorally demonstrate to the brain that there's no real danger, do you now see why um, that little acronym works there, A minus R equals C, anxiety minus rituals equals cure. Do you now understand why that works based on how the brain watches your behaviors? <coughs> do, you now, do you now see why that little acronym works? Does it make sense why it works now? What's up, Carol? I hope you're having a good day. <clears throat> and that's fine, God's child. We're not trying to force anybody to give up anything. This is completely up to you. This is a personal journey. This is a personal experience, right? We're not telling anybody that they have to listen to me or, or, or you know, do this full force or dive in head first, right? We're just giving you the option, and we're telling you why it works. And then what you do with it is completely up to you. So don't feel guilty. <clears throat> Absolutely, Megan. Sounds like you're on the right track. So, again, let's put that very simply once more. Um, I really like to drive my points home. You guys know that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? So A minus R equals C. Anxiety minus rituals equals the cure. How does that work? Because we have to behaviorally demonstrate to the brain that there's no real problem. That's the only way this part of the brain learns. So if we change our behaviors to um, satisfy the anxiety, a.k.a. coping methods, then the brain goes, hmm, why did they do that? <laughs> right? There must be a problem. <laughs> so 
again, you, you now, I hope you now understand why that little acronym is the truth. Uh, once more, shout out to Nothing Works, Stop Weebly. Awesome little read there. <clears throat> Everybody get where we're coming from on that? Because I know how anxious people wor uh, work. They want to know why it works. <laughs> They want to know why it works. So Lewis says, yeah, if, if you keep on playing the game while feeling stuff, then the brain will be like, oh, okay, he looks like he's not affected him, so it's not needed. Yeah, so exactly, anxiety minus rituals equals cure, because that part of the brain only learns by being shown through your behaviors whether or not there's a real problem. So if you allow the anxiety to affect your behaviors, a.k.a. coping methods, the brain goes, hmm, <laughs> why did they do that? <laughs> It's a learning process, Summer. Don't beat yourself up. I, I myself and nobody here in the chat can say that they got the hang of this thing overnight. That's just not how it works. So please do not beat yourself up. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this one here. We are approaching the one-hour mark. I appreciate you guys for watching. Again, what you do with this information is up to you. Um, however, if you do decide to go this route, I hope it makes more sense to you now why acceptance is key. All right? I love you guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much again for the tip goal today. Thank you so much for your love and support. Um, and we are almost halfway to 10,000 subscribers. It feels like yesterday we were celebrating 9K. So thank you guys so, 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 so much for everything that you do. And I'm sure I will see you soon. Stay awesome. Time to prove to your brain.